dragons will rule the Seven Kingdoms for the next hundred years. Just as they did the last. The best fiction, the best drama, is about characters. The story of House of the Dragon is a story about very flawed human beings capable of doing good things, capable of doing monstrous things, capable of courage, capable of cowardice. These are the kind of characters that I love the most. Game of Thrones begins roughly 298 AC, almost 300 years after Aegon's conquest. House of Dragon takes place a couple hundred years before Game of Thrones. Jaehaerys Targaryen, the old king who was the fourth Targaryen to rule over Westeros, he was only 14 when he ascended to the Iron Throne and he ruled for uh, 55 years. It was a very peaceful time in the history of Westeros. It was a time of prosperity. King's Landing really grew enormously. It was a good time. Viserys, the first, who is the heir that was chosen by the Great Council. When Jaehaerys passes away, he takes over, and he is now uh, reigning over the, the Seven Kingdoms. There were a lot of Targaryens at that point, and you can see how the seeds of war are sometimes planted in a time of peace. People die, and the sons take over for fathers as lords, and they don't necessarily think they're bound by their fathers allegiances or decisions or vows. So little by little, the seeds are spreading. Game of Thrones focused on the Starks and the Lannisters. For House of the Dragon, the Targaryens themselves, the House of the Dragon are at center, but two of the biggest players in the Dance of the Dragon Civil War are the Valerians and the Hightowers. In terms of history in Westeros, the High Towers are the oldest. They've been there for thousands of years. Their seat of power is Old Town, which was for many hundreds and thousands of years the biggest city in Westeros. They're a very rich house. Old Town is wealthy from trade, mostly. And in the center of it is the High Tower, for which the High Towers take their name. Lord High Tower is in Old Town, ruling over uh, his domains in the city. But his younger brother, Otto Hightower, is the hand of the king when the story opens. Same position we saw Ned Stark play uh, to, to Robert at the beginning of uh, Game of Thrones. The Valerians were also a house from the freehold of Valeria, the mightiest empire in at least the West in my world. And they actually arrived in Westeros before the Targaryens. They were not dragon lords, however, they were seafarers. At that time, the freehold of Valeria depended a lot on its trade, and it was a good position to dominate trade from all the kingdoms of Westeros and from other places even further north. So they moved for reasons of trade and, and wealth. Corlys Valerion is Lord Admiral and Master of Ships, as his own grandfather was before him of a similar name. So since Aegon's conquest, the Valerians have been very high in the councils of the House Targaryen. And after all his voyages, he's married to Rhaenys Targaryen, the queen who never was. House Targaryen and House Valerion, they were close. There was a definite uh, relationship between them. The Targaryens are also an ancient house, but they're not an ancient Westerosi house. They knew that destruction was coming to Valeria and went far away from the capital city, and they settled on the volcanic island of Dragonstone. They were dragon lords in Valeria. Now, dragons are really formidable, and they can turn the tide of a battle. It flies. It's difficult to hit. It breathes fire, against which most knights and men-at-arms have little or no protection. So if you have dragons, and that's where the nuclear option analogy comes in, you're hard to mess around with. So the dragons and fear of dragons was one of the things that made the Targaryens very 
secure in their power. Dragon Seven is one thing, but the Iron Throne is the most dangerous seat in the realm.